Okay, so this is a very painful story and a survival, a survival story. <laughs> so we came here to have, you know, a view and a first uh, scene of the Green River. And then there's another side to it, which I I went to see. The, I was told there's some kind of waterfall around the other side, so I tried to go find it, and I was caught in the quicksand. <laughs> I mean, I was soaked in the mud. <laughs> But down almost to my knees. Yeah, we're the video. And uh, I, uh, what saved me was where my hands was was a little bit dry and hard. If it was as soft and as quick as well, this video won't be <laughs> done right now. It would be another kind of video. It would be an SOS. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, that being said and done, I have all the experience to survive here. Mm. So if you want to come here, you contact me for survival skills. <laughs> I tell you how to survive. There are a lot of things I've not told you about the quicksand, and I will say, yes. come and consult me. Phone number and email <laughs> at the bottom of the video. <laughs> <laughs> As part of my efforts to live sustainably and promote sustainable living as the best way to protect our planet, I came up with a series I call Exploring Nature's Wonders. In this series, I will visit and explore beautiful and fascinating natural spots. I will start from spots close to me and expand to other places in the world. The aim of this series is to show how beautiful the earth is and why we should all make a collective effort to protect it. To take quality aerial videos and pictures for this series, I have recruited Crystal Drone Services. Crystal Drone Services is a leading expert in aerial videography and photography. They have shot aerial videos and pictures of so many interesting places and landscapes. Check out their YouTube channel and be amazed. I'll put the link in the description below. The first place I chose to document for this series was an arboretum in the University of Rio that I stumbled upon some time ago. It is a tree botanical garden planted by the Department of Forestry of the University. It has tall trees, stunningly arranged in arrays. There's a path in the middle of the array that allows you to walk through and marvel at this beautiful man-made forest. Unfortunately, the day I made the visit to formally document the place, I was denied access to the school campus. I was informed that entrance is currently prohibited due to the ongoing assault strike. I will still document the arboretum as soon as entrance to that campus is allowed again. Where will I now visit was the question on my mind. I wanted a place in Rio or close to Rio where I live. The answer came unexpectedly. One day I was scrolling down my Twitter feed and I saw a post from someone about his visit to this beautiful blue river in Ibe Sultan local government area of Aquaibo. I was like, Bola, this will be the first place I will explore because it is so close to me. Ibe Sultan is a neighboring local government to Uyo. It is just a few kilometers from the center of Uyo. It is so close that you can mistake part of it to be Uyo. I made inquiry about the location of this river in Ibe Sikbo. And I was informed that um, it is just a few kilometers from Nodo Roundabout. Nodo Roundabout is one of the biggest roundabouts in the country and connects the four major roads in the basic local government area. My cousin Big Dean and my friend in MSD team, along with Crystal Drone Services, joined me for this trip. We met up at Nongoku Junction, at least it used to be a junction, a beautiful roundabout is currently under construction there, so very soon it's going to be called Nongoku Roundabout. Nongoku is actually in Ibesikbo but feels like it is in Uyo. It is a border village of Ibesikbo with Uyo. Like we departed Nongoku Roundabout for Nongdu Roundabout by 8.25 am. They are a few kilometers apart and cross several villages in Ibesikbo. The road is one of the best in the state. It is a third double carriage road which gives a smooth ride. You can see the beautiful vegetation and communities on the side of the road as we drive through. It's, it's always
always so beautiful that some of the major roads in Akwaiwam State to you are being decorated with trees. You know, it helps to uh, it helps in the ecosystem and you know helps to uh, improve the uh, quality of air that is circulating. And it, 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 so also, it's very, very aesthetically pleasing to the eyes as you are just as you are driving down, just seeing an array of trees on, this, on the road. It's very pleasing on the eyes. We got to know the roundabout within a few minutes. So, this is a, a major roundabout, one of the biggest in Aquaibum State. Uh, we are about turning. We are still heading straight. We enter the last of the four major routes. Looking at the business sign board, reviewed the name of the village there as Ikorok Baitok. Later found out the name of the road is actually the road. This is okay. called uh, Ikorok Baitok. Yes. When we got a few meters into the du road, we inquired for directions and we told that we are actually on the wrong road. We then directed to the right one and it was actually the road before the du road and it's called Ekate Highway. So we just asked for direction and uh, we seen we had we were on the wrong path. So we are turning now and uh, we are about going to the right path. We turned and made our way back to the roundabout and then drove into the Akit Highway. Signpost at the entrance of the road reviewed the name of the village as Mberebe Akawa. We had to get further direction from two locals as we go inside the road. The second person now showed us an untired bad road that leads into the village where the water is. So we are still asking for, still asking for directions. Asking for directions again. We got on the on third road and asked for direction from the people we saw in the first house. After many twists and turns as we were directed, we then found a lady that offered to join us and guide us to the location. She alighted right at the entrance of the road that leads to the water and gave us final direction. After a few minutes of driving, we finally got to a path with a small fence made with palm fronts as the lady had told us to look out for. Driving into the path seemed like a bad idea, so we parked at the entrance to the path and walked into it. It was a bit slopey and had unstable loose soil. The fresh tire marks of big sand trucks explained the bad condition of the path. So we just arrived here. Um, 
we are thinking that this is where the stream is there's an entrance right here there's an entrance so my crew my crew they're already walking down so it looks like a way you would normally find it the stream is, is a slope so let's go let's go see lucky for us a young man on his bike drove down the path to take his bath and I figured I can get as much information as I can from him. We walked down the base of the path and we were greeted by a stunning stagnant green body of water sitting in a basin of air. The wall of the basin showed clay markings of large sand excavators proposing that this place is a man-made basin created by sand mining activities. Then he hit me for the first time that this might not be a river as proclaimed, but more like a man-made pond or lake. I will speculatively call it a pond for the rest of this video. I began to inspect the pond and its surrounding as far as my eyes could see. The pond has thick vegetation at its edges and some vegetation inside it. At the entrance of the pond were pieces of wood logs used to wash clothes by the locals. The water at the entrance of the pond looked clear, while the blue-green hue can be seen in other parts of the water. This has made me speculate that the coloration is caused by algae growth. So it's not actually green, so if you see, it's clear. Completely clear. There's something green underneath that's yeah. giving the green coloration. Remember the young man on his way to take his bath? Well, he finally came down to the pond with his bathing items to take his bath. I gathered from him that the name of the village is Ikora Pauso, that people shower, wash, and even drink from this pond. The sand mining activities happens around the pond too. He told me that there are fishes in the water. So I stooped low to search for them and I spotted one. The fish was a tiny transparent kind, I don't think it's edible. While looking for fish, I noticed some floating plastics in the water. They appeared to be mainly single-use plastic sachets or washing agents. I presume it's discarded in the water by people who use it to wash and or take their bath. Thankfully, it was not so much. but. It still goes to show the menace of marine plastics in our water. It was time to bring out the big guns. Crystal drone fired up the drone to give us an aerial view of the pond. The pond looks to be at least a kilometer in length and has a narrow and irregular width. The pond is bordered on the side by palm fruit plantation. You can see clear excavator marks on the basin wall as you transverse the length of the pond. You can see a couple of sand mining points along the sides of the pond as well. The water seems to have termination points at both ends, further following my speculation that this is a pond or lake. Yeah. <laughs> there's a nice video of you 
All right. Are we done? Yeah. It was time to give the local man space to take a shower. So we went to explore another access point to the water he mentioned to us. Being left ahead of us, but we were less than two minutes behind him. The path to this access point was similar to the one we came in through. It was unstable and loose with marks made by esca excavator chain tires. There were several mounds of recently dug up sand on the side of the path. We caught glimpses of the pond through the vegetation as we walked down the path. We heard Dean yell out about being trapped in quicksand and we rushed to assist him. What? Are you okay? Are you serious? <laughs> wow. Oh my god, oh my god. Hmm. Okay guys, so you've seen one of the potential dangers. Yes! Yeah. Yeah, yeah, please, be careful. Be wow. Be careful. Wow. <laughs> hmm. <I could. laughs> Looks like a weighty balance. <laughs> this is serious. I, someone will not even know. So. I'm you know, like, I thought it was solid. I didn't know it was just something. We were greeted by a valley made from sand excavation at the end of the path. Turned out he was only being dramatic. It was no quicksand. He stepped on a clay area of the valley but quickly got out. His shoe and lower legs were covered in thick clay though. Is that place is strong? Is that not look yeah. still, it still looks No, this side is strong. Mm. That place is clay. It's clay. Dean walked down to the pond to wash the clay off his legs. I walked down to the pond to, to have a clear view of the water from this section. The water looked equally stunning from here. It also seemed to end here in a thick vegetation. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, man. It's part of the adventure. Yeah. Let's come to the adventure. I'll put it as part of the story. Okay. And I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the side. Of, he said that other side mm. where that thing is. From on this side, so that's the side, side I yeah. wanted to go to. Okay, that water is running. How? Yeah, there's like, a running. Water comes from that side. No, I think there's like maybe I don't know the way this pipe goes. Like you know, water flows from here, mm. from under the soil here and from this way. You wanted to enter here. Mm. Oh, this side is deep. Oh. Mm. This side looks deep. This side is not your mate. Oh. Mm. Uh. And the funny thing is that inside this water is as muddy and sticky as you Yes, can. yes. So it will catch you. Yes. And you can if I say okay, you go and hit your leg and come up again. And drone will not help you. <laughs> <laughs> the drone will not help you. And, and you know because this what this is not this is not a river, this is a lake. Mm. Or a, a pond lake. or lake, uh -huh, something like that. It's not it's not that explains why this is how they can try. Yes. Because the water is relatively stagnant. I have seen the entire area of this place, and I'm telling you, this water stops here. Mm. Yes, I'll show you the It stops here. The, the pond appeared deep, muddy, and thus unsafe to wash in. So we agreed to go back to the previous access point for Dean to wash up. That the water is really flowing. 
Okay. You notice a small water stream that seems to come from somewhere up here, make its way through the valley and then into the pond. I almost got stuck in clay too while trying to trace the stream to its source. The stream mixes with the clay in this valley and makes the area a trap, so one needs to be very careful here. Sorry. Scary. We made our way back to the first access point for them to clean up. What did you say? You should actually like interview him and he explain my his experience. experience. Yes. So you know what it takes to survive. <laughs> Come and tell me another thing. Yeah. yeah. That's why they down, they muddy. Uh -huh. So can they show you? The drone video showed another access point at the end of the pond which we would have loved to explore. But we decided to call it quits for the day and head back to you because Dean and Ine were uncomfortable in their soggy clothes and shoes. Okay, guys, so we are done without leaving. Yeah. <laughs> we got a bit worried about how we'll get to the third road that led us here, considering the many twists and turns we took to get here. Google Map came to our rescue. Using all the roundabout as our destination, it showed us a route out. The route is actually the best and shortest route into and out of the Korokwasu community. So this is us on our way out to, we had to use a Google map because we couldn't figure out where we came from or how we even got here. So and then we're really hopeful we don't go well Yes, we're not carrying us through somebody's farm. <laughs> One more, about 25 kilometers to get to Nomodo, at least the map is safe. So um, wish us luck. Overall, it was an amazing experience. We got to see the amazing Sirini Basic Bosut and local government area and the Korokwasu community as we drove in search of the pond. We had fun as we explored this beautiful and wonderful green body of water. However, 
he came there with a lot of questions and left with speculative answers at best. Questions like, how long has this water body been in existence? Was it a natural water body that has now been widened and deepened by sand mining activities? Or did it form as a result of water collecting in the basin created by sand mining activities? What species live in and around this water? What causes this beautiful distinctive green coloration in the pond? Is it a pond or lake or even something else? Only real experts can provide answers to these questions and more. As I say goodbye, I'll give you one more view of this beautiful place. Nature is worth protecting, isn't it? Look out for my next video.